Welcome to e Violet Travel. We are Jenny and Kevin, and we're super excited to share this awesome experience with you today. Our first Lucha Libre match in Mexico. Ever. It's a cage match at the cathedral where Lucha Libre was pretty much born. Arena Mexico. This is, what we're ready for. this is what we're ready for. Make sure that you subscribe, hit that like button, and follow, and hit the bell so you can follow us on our journey. Don't miss out on all of our awesome adventures. Today is gonna be one heck of a ride, so make sure to strap down. If you have a beer, get a beer, and come and enjoy this experience with us. can't attend a Lucha Libre without a mask. So we're gonna have our first Lucha Libre experience with some friends. Let's go introduce you to them. <laughs> we met up with some friends that we made over in Puerto Escondido. We all, in some way, shape or form, have a connection to the Los Odeli Hostel. And we're getting ready for our first Lucha Libre today. What's up guys, you ready? So we ready? ready. We're ready. Lucha. We're ready for this. <laughs> but first, food, let's go eat. <laughs> While Jenny went to go look for a place to eat, me and the gang went shopping. Let me introduce you to them. Da 50 la máscara, da 50 la máscara. <laughs> I'm here with my boy Charles. What's happening? Charles is the founder of Pinolero Baseball Project, a nonprofit that promotes a healthy lifestyle and education to low resource communities in Nicaragua. Check out his website to see the awesome work he's doing to help enrich communities in Nicaragua. We're gonna share some information on the arena, the Lucha Libre history, enjoy some of the matches, and maybe even get a VIP experience. So make sure to stay tuned. Okay. Hey guys, check this out. The Planky has a chair. The street vendors sell all kinds of things from toys, keychains, hats, shirts. Gotta get this Lucha Libre shirt. Todas las máscaras. How much? Uh, 400, but you know, we negotiated them down to like 300. I hope you guys show off what you got. Alright, let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. Gotta upgrade my t shirt game. So I went with a nice little Lucha Libre shirt. So do you know who these dudes are? Nah, but they could probably all beat me in a wrestling match, so. <laughs> I could just tell you. That's. Wait, this is Blue Devil? And now this one? Is it Santo? Santo. Santo is the most famous. He looks scary, man. I, I'm scared of him. He revolutionized Lucha Libre in the 1950s, bro. Hey, good purchase, gotta, I think. You got a legend on your shirt. There we go. Yo, so I just got this sticker uh, of a DJ Lucha. Also, I'm Teddy G. Check me out on my SoundCloud, Teddy G. That'd be dope. Hey, Hello, I'm Hugo Guadarrama. I have 31 years old. I'm from the city of Mexico and I like a lot to come to the luchas. Ah, well, it's a luchador who is very famous here in the city of de, de México, la verdad tiene muchos seguidores, pero bueno, nosotros lo seguimos a él desde que empezó. ¿Hace cuánto? Híjole, no recuerdo bien, pero yo estaba muy niño y antes llegaban aquí al estacionamiento de la arena y lo teníamos que estar viendo. O sea, ahorita aquí tú te tomas tu foto con él y te cobran, pero antes era estarlo esperando en el estacionamiento para que pudieras tener tu foto. Yo tengo fotos con él cuando iba empezando y venimos a cuando tuvo su primer este, lucha de máscara contra máscara en varias luchas contra varios rivales, el hijo del perro aguayo, la warrior, entonces traía buenas rivalidades con otros luchadores y la verdad es que es un luchador bastante, bastante bueno. Y Arena México, ¿por qué es especial? Es nuestra primera vez, así que... Ay, no, la verdad es que se van a ir encantados de la, de la arena, es una experiencia muy padre. Y te recordamos la verdad que, es que si el día de hoy quieres tu es foto, parte de la cultura, de la cultura mexicana. Supuesto, Entonces yo creo que cualquier persona que venga de fuera, si no viene a la arena México, no vino directamente aquí a la ciudad. Doctor La Vista 205 es la tienda Pues sí, la verdad es que venimos a seguir a Místico, pero más venimos por también la lucha de que va a haber en jaula, que es 
algo que normalmente son eventos especiales aquí en la Arena México y se ponen muy atractivas, la verdad, muchos luchadores nuevos, nuevos valores, entonces es como para que se vayan dando a conocer. We went to go eat right across the street from the arena because it was the only thing that was open. The restaurant had no name, but it was really, really good. Lucha Libre dates back to the mid 19th century when one of the main founders, Enrique Ugartechea, helped invent Lucha Libre, inspired by the Greek Roman form of wrestling. In the 1900s, Lucha Libre was popular in Mexico, but it did not reach mainstream popularity until 1933 when Salvador Luterot founded the Empresa Mexicana de Lucha Libre and hosted the first international match at Arena Mexico on September 21, 1933. The event was such a big success that the arena was later renovated to fit 16,000 fans, which was the largest wrestling arena in the world in 1956. The 1950s were considered the golden age of Lucha Libre, and there were two reasons for that explosion. First, television. And second, the popularity of the sport in the 50s and 60s was largely thanks to one wrestler in particular, the legendary El Santo, who wrestled for five decades and never revealed his face to the public until just shortly before he died in 1984. His greatest rival was the Blue Demon and the Mil Mascaras, who was the first Mexican wrestler to introduce high-flying moves that are common today. Luchadores became a symbol of justice for the common person and were immortalized in movies and comic books. Today, the Lucha Libre is hosted twice a week at Arena Mexico and once a week at El Coliseo. Me, I got my beer, I'm ready to go. Oh wait, where's our masks? Gold time, baby. Let's go. <laughs> so today we got a really cool experience with you guys because we were able to get a VIP experience. One of the founders of the Wrestling Federation League here in Mexico has invited us to come and check out the behind the scenes of the Lucha Libre. So we're super excited and it's gonna be one heck of a vlog. Can you explain us what's going on? Yeah. You ready, dude? <laughs> Why is your mask not on, though, bro? You gotta put that mask on, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Woo! Por eso la relación con, con mi con Hermosillo. Ajá. Mi abuelo se casa con Mida Camus y se regresan a México. Él estaba trabajando en Hermosillo. Uh -huh. Se regresa a México y, y con dos, tres hijos que ya teníamos necesitaba comenzar a generar más recursos. Y, y estaba buscando un negocio, siempre tenía un, un, pues siempre fue muy emprendedor, pero todos sus negocios eran a crédito y era malísimo para cobrar. Entonces un día lo invitan, sí, lo invitan a, a, a visitar una casa San Antonio, formó un gimnasio, una escuela para desarrollar talento. Y entonces comienza a tener varios luchadores propios y eso es lo que le da la ventaja sobre otras empresas que intentaban hacer el espectáculo deportivo. Esa es la historia. La historia de la máscara es un poquito más compleja porque no había enmascarados en ese entonces y vino un luchador norteamericano y lo enmascararon, pero antes de él hubo un un intento de, 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 de parece parece cómico 
porque es un tipo súper delgado, sin ofender, más delgado que tú, y con una máscara. Entonces imagínate, en un lugar donde la gente viene, está ponchadona y, y sabe de lucha y sabe de deporte. Mucho gusto, mucho hola, gusto, ¿cómo estás? Mucho gusto. Hola, hola, hola. ¿Listo? ¿Vas a ganar o qué? Claro, claro. Sí, casi para todos es nuestra primera experiencia de lucha libre. Sí, somos vírgenes, vamos aquí a primer hoy, pero les vamos a encantar. Este vino desde Polonia y se anda cagando porque. Ah, sí. Yo soy muy polaco. Pero sí, mucho gusto por la lucha. Sí, la primera vez, a ver, a ver qué.
De, de mi hermano, sus hijos, tal vez en algún futuro mis hijos, pero es parte de, ¿no? La gente viene a desestresarse, a sacar toda la euforia que, que trae durante todo el año, durante todas las semanas, el trabajo, los viernes en las luchas, es algo en donde tú vas a encontrar a las personas y a, las, a la gente, sacar todo su estrés, va a escuchar mil cosas, pero es parte de la cultura mexicana, Dale. buscar una parte para desestresarse y sentirse bien aliviado. Y la lucha libre mexicana nos permite eso a todos los mexicanos, ¿no? Dale, dale. Dale, muchas gracias, amigo, eh. Hermano, qué bueno que... Por favor, explain your wrestling experience. Jenny, go. Come back to me. Yeah, yeah, hold on, I need a second. Puta. <laughs> 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 Beso, beso, beso. <laughs> Chido. <laughs> Iconic. Ruthless. Epic. Salvaje. Oh! <laughs> 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 We're zooming in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I got myself this Mystico mask, but I'm lucky enough to have actually gotten it autographed by Mystico himself. We actually went to start now 2022 the right way. We realized we had to come here. It was one hell of a ride. 
right? It was so much fun. I'm so tired it's from like, like the last three nights, especially New Year's Eve. But it's like just back to back to back to back action. Like for two hours, it drains all of your energy. It's very therapeutic too. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this vlog. Definitely check out Lucha Libre when you come to Mexico, the last ciudad de Mexico. Uh, we got nothing much else to say, but we're about to head out. Se cuidan, se bañan, y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Chao. Yeah. <laughs> Speechless. Give me a word. Yeah, speechless.